Hey, I think everyone is here. Um, yes, hi, sorry, I'll turn my camera on in a sec. Yeah. Um, so if you guys wanna get started early, that's a possibility. Um, we're not quite ready yet, so we're just going to start the start time in 12 minutes. Sounds good.
If everyone can send their emails in the chat, we can start an email chain. Do either of the other judges want to be on the email chain? Oh. Awesome. All right, I'll send that out. Oh, yeah, I will send you that. All right, I sent it. So if everyone wants to confirm that they got it, um, and then I think me and Sydney should be good to start. Yeah, I got it. Okay, if everyone's good, I can start. Judges, just let me know y'all are ready. Okay, perfect. You go clear. All right, if everyone's ready, I'll start my time now. Clear not negate in our first contention is currency devaluation. For countries undergoing debt relief, the IMF policy recommendations regularly include currency devaluations. Jaron Walter indicate that having an IMF program increases the likelihood that authorities will devalue their exchange rate by 31%. Percentage points. Unfortunately, currency devaluation doesn't work. Look to Brazil for the empirical example. Rouse explained that the IMF said its arrangements and currency devaluation occurred. This devaluation shifted Brazilian agriculture around soybeans, as Valdez explained in 2020, that Brazil's devaluation prompted farmers to, farmers to plant additional areas to soybeans, increasing production. Exports rose significantly, resulting in Brazil's emergence as the world's largest soybean exporter. The harm is that this soybean cultivation destroys the Amazon, as Richards explains that devaluation of the Brazilian real contributed to the creation of an additional 63,000 kilometers of soybean production, but the Amazon's 28,000 kilometers of soybean areas were brought into production. The cur currency depreciation resulted in over 78,000 kilometers of new soybean fields, approximately 60% increase in the area. Destroying the Amazon guarantees extinction in three ways, as Tulik argues that almost 20% of the Amazon's rainforest has been lost to deforestation and rapid depletion could eliminate road remains. The climate also has an effect on the global scale, which would change the Amazon to, to transform into a carbon sink to a carbon source. About 20% of fresh river water in the world comes from the Amazon. Dying the forest can negatively influence water sources as the Amazon is home to 10% of the world species and insects that agriculture depends on for global medicinal purposes. Contention to a sedan. The IMF crushes any hope for aspiring democracies as Musa writes that the IMF has consistently undermined the ability of democratic governments to set their own priorities and policy objectives by forcing shock therapy. IMF programs curtail the representative function of democratic institutions. And Kurtz wrote this week that, Su uh, that Sudan was dominated by technocrats from the international financial institutions. The economic reforms have hit people of Sudan hard and devalued the Sudanese pound by almost 700%. Civil society participants were left feeling that their only choice was to consent to reforms by the program agreed in the IMF, which 
is why protests have been found to increase. And Kurtz concludes this week that after the economic reforms from a regional perspective, democratization appears unlikely in two days to Dan. Two models of authoritarian ru rules from its immediate neighbor are reportedly being brought up. Both models, a military dictatorship and authoritarian, authoritarian state, are the possible pathways to for Sudan to today. Oof, I lost my document. So either pathway represents a failed democratization as failed to Sudanese democratization causes a full blown East African refugee crisis as the OMQUEST finds that Sudan's collapse of, into war was a result of a failed transition and will be the largest state failure in modern history. Egypt and Ethiopia would be caught in the blast radius. Weapons, refugees, and extremism would all be projected in all directions. The historic trans transitioning unfolding in Sudan will set the course for the region for the next several decades and there are two impacts. The first is East African governments don't have financial capacity to host refugees as Ordero writes that East Africa is compromised is comprised of developing countries which are still reliant on, on development assistance, which are not yet fit for the purposes of supporting refugees. Stretching fiscal or financial capital ensures interstate conflicts and mass deaths as William finds that hosting displaced populations is problematic for hosting communities' resources as the pressure on the host communities builds up uh, and has potentially destabilizing effects. This displacement is just drawing in on neighboring countries, feeling the extended regional instability and the impact of this instability just keeps on going as Heath argues that civil wars produce long-term damage to public health care systems that extend well beyond the period of active warfare. Civil wars greatly raise the risk of death and disability and infectious diseases. But second, it's East African refugee crises to guarantee terrible living conditions and mass death. As Ortero writes, that an, an East African refugee crisis will lead to a full-blown displacement crisis which can burn for decades as policies trap refugee populations, depriving refugees of social and economic outcomes. And Williams quantifies that Africa's displacement crisis has a spectrum of serious humanitarian consequences as displaced populations are subject to higher levels of morbidity, mortality, and malnutrition, 60 times average levels. As the scale of Africa's displacement crisis increases, the human costs also grow to be more profound. Yeah, I got a doc. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, the case has been sent. I'll let you know when I get it. Okay, you're good. All right. Um, a couple of clarifications first. Um, First, if at any point we go, I go too quickly, um, please unmute and give me a verbal cue, say clear or something, uh, because I'm not being able, I'm not gonna be able to read chat. I'm gonna be reading off of my computer as well. Uh, so verbal cues, it shouldn't be that fast, but if necessary, verbal cues uh, would be appreciated. And then, um, actually that's it. So uh, if anybody is not ready, speak now or forever hold your peace. No? Wonderful. Apella affirms our first contention is Jordan. Jordan was on the brink of a crisis. Sowell 18 explains that mismanaged governments left the nation in a debt crisis requiring economic restructuring. Al Makele 18 continues that Jordan needs an urgent bailout to avert a worse crisis. Al Khalidi 20 continues that the IMF has provided Jordan a $1.3 billion program and piloted reform. Specifically, the IMF reforms their Jordan's economy and averts crisis in two ways. First is borrowing rates. Al Khalidi continues that Jordan's IMF deal has secured itself grants and loans at low borrowing rates, reducing their debt to GDP ratio. Second is through attracting capital. Nozaki 11 explains that IMF reforms generate fiscal space for countries to spend and attract capital, leading Reuters 20 to find that Jordan has begun increasing social spending. Thus, Moody 20 reports that Jordan has stabilized their economy with the debt to GDP ratio dropping below 90%. Worman 20 explains that absent such reduction, the nation would have to implement political, but politically unpopular austerity measures. Elanese 18 explains that Jordan's budgeting and regime survival are strongly linked as mounting deficits cause worsening popular frustration, giving way to Islamist influence. Jordan's stability is of utmost importance as Mandela 18 analyzed that Iran would take advantage of Jordan's instability and potentially invade. Worryingly, Brown 14 notes that Jordan serves as a buffer between 
Israel and Iran with the regime collapse, posing an existential crisis to Israel. In response, Horshik 19 warns that Israel would launch a preemptive strike at Iran, triggering a regional conflict, and Avery 20 terminalizes that war with Iran would likely go nuclear, causing a nuclear winter and extinction. Contention two is COVID. COVID has wrecked the global economy, forcing countries to borrow beyond their means. Smith 20 writes that emerging market currencies have reached severely undervalued levels. In Garver 20 warns of a debt tsunami threatening the world economy, specifying that in the developing world, the debt burden has increased by 26% since COVID began. This is a long-term issue as Mark 20 finds that post-pandemic countries will be faced with a second wave of economic distress. Fortunately, the IMF has acted as a solution to this in three ways. First is through bailouts. Masters 20 finds that IMF countries, I, I, Masters 20 finds that countries summon the IMF whenever they can't service their debt to creditors, in which case the IMF bails them out, extending loans and reorganizing debt payment schedules. And the Financial Times 20 continues that, it's, that following its bailout of Greece, the IMF also realized that austerity measures are harmful and since then has offered unconditional loans. That's why during COVID, Gallagher 20 finds that the IMF lent $88 billion without strings attached while also encouraging health and social spending. Empirically, Corsetti 04 finds that such loans have worked in countries such as Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, and Belima in 19 finds that IMF programs actually reduced the risk of future debt defaults by 1.3%. That's why Shabir 15 impacts that a 1% increase in a 1% increase in debt actually decreases developmental spending by 4.1%, which is why Kenworthy 99 terminalizes that poverty would otherwise increase by around 3%. Second is through credit. COVID-19 collapsed tax revenue, as Phillips 20 explains, the governments owe billions of dollars in interest and repayments. Unless their interest rates fall or they are given loan extensions, both of which require good credit, dozens of countries will default. Fortunately, Broom 08 writes that developing economies draw on the IMF's credible reputation for demanding macroeconomic restraint as a way to internationally signal that they are a safe investment. Thus, Kronke 20 finds that IMF's presence serves as a positive signal for creditworthiness, and Kai 18 confirms that of 117 rating agencies' statement about the IMF, only one mentions negative influence. Crucially, Coeper 18 implicates that better sovereign ratings can reduce inflation to make borrowing far cheaper, and moreover, Mark furthers that increasing credit is the key to preventing further economic distress and staving off economic collapse. Third is special drawing rights. The Bretton Woods Project 09 explains that SDRs or special drawing rights are an international reserve asset created by the IMF to unconditionally boost a nation's capital reserve. The BWP continues that holders of SDRs can obtain hard currency in exchange for SDRs and improve their liquidity. This is especially true during the pandemic as Reuters 21 writes that IMF is passing a $500 billion boost to global capital reserves via the SDR system. These allocations directly benefit the global poor as Brookings 20 explains that because SDRs make acquiring liquidity incredibly simple, they are the best way to kickstart Africa's recovery from the pandemic, which has pushed millions to poverty across the continent. That's why Hard 20 explains that SDRs preserve social spending and economic activity, increasing capital reserves by 19% in developing countries. Overall, cushioning the economic fallout of COVID is paramount, as Oxfam 20 warns that a second wave of economic distress could push half a billion people into poverty, ultimately impoverishing half of the globe in COVID's aftermath. For those reasons, we affirm. Okay, can you send, um, can you send credibility and just like all of Jordan? So Jordan first, preferably. Okay, Shabir, I'll send Jordan. Will you send the credibility stuff? Uh, it's in the same doc. Do you mind just sending it? Okay, yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Uh, for some reason, it's not copying the last part of the Avery evidence, which is the evidence that terminalizes into nuclear war. Will you be all right if I just send? Um, I really actually really like to see the Avery evidence. Also, can you send the IMF is now giving unconditional loans? Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's not copying with the formatting. So it's just. All the okay. Time. Well, if you could just like highlight in Gmail or something like the part that I should be reading or the part that was read. Of each card in the entire Jordan? No, just in Avery. Like, is that the only one that's not keeping formatting? No, no, no. The entire, yeah, the entire thing is not keeping formatting. Can I, I, can I put it in a Google Doc and can I give you the, can I send yeah, it in a Google Doc? Yeah, that's fine. Or just send it as a Word Doc, either way. I don't care. Okay. Uh, actually, that might be easier. Okay, I'm sending it as a Word doc or a PDF, but PDF of the Word doc.
I have not gotten it yet. I'll let you know when I yeah, do. Yeah, I haven't. I'll let you know when I send it. Oh, sure. Sorry. I'm still trying to get it to. It's not showing up in my downloads for some reason now. Oh, that's why it's not safe there. All right. The Jordan stuff is sent, and then the, there were two other pieces of evidence that you had asked for. Which are those? That was IMF is now doing unconditional loans, and then the credibility stuff. Okay, so I'll send you all of subpoint B on credibility, and then unconditional loans now, which is Financial Times and Gallagher. Okay. Um, the two stuff on the two things on uh, conditionality are sent, and then the last one you wanted was everything on credibility. Credibility, correct. If there's something else that's missing, let me know. But I think I got everything. All right, I'll let you know when we get everything. Um, so far, the only thing that I've Okay, I just got the case dog. Okay. Everything should be sent. Um, let me um, know. I think w one person on. Oh, wait. I got the case dog. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're good for cross. Do you have first question? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Let me just pull up my timer. Okay. You tell me that IMF loans carry credibility, so investors like are more likely to invest in countries that have IMF loans. But why do investors like IMF loans? Uh, because we're not saying that investors like IMF loans. We're saying. Well, why are IMF loans credible for investment? To find, I'm not quite sure you understand what I mean. The contention is when a developing country is going through a crisis, it does not show credibility to other actors like investors, right? Yeah. Cool. So but, the, go ahead. No, yeah, you, you finish. Okay, yeah. So when the IMF goes in and it gives loans to the developing world, it signals to those investors that they this, this country is now ready to turn its economy around and get itself out of it. Okay, but yes, that we're saying the exact same thing. My question is, why do investors like when the IMF goes in and give these countries loans? That's my question. Investors don't necessarily like it. Investors believe that that means the country is willing to turn around. Okay, the reason why investors like IMF loans is because they come with conditions so that they know that when they invest their money into countries that come with IMF loans, that it's actually going to those places because they have to put steps in place before they put their money down. So you tell me that now IMF loans no longer comes with strings attached. So why would that not in turn decrease investor confidence? Because the IMF's credible, credible reputation already exists. And that's, again, the broom evidence that says that their credible reputation already exists, which means whether or not they have these conditions in place, investors believe that when the IMF goes into another country and offers it loans, it is a signal that that country is ready to turn itself around. You can have a question. Cool. Let's talk about devaluation. You yeah. say that Brazil, well, I guess I'm not talking about devaluation, but on your devaluation contention, you say that Brazil has lost 23% of their Amazon forest, correct? 20% of the Amazon has been lost to deforestation, yes. Cool. 
So has every single part of the Amazon that's been cut down turned into a soybean farm? No, but we're saying that the area that's been used for soybean production increased 60% as a result of IMF agricultural liberalization. The cards are really specific in saying that the IMF is the key reason why Brazil shifted its economy yeah. to solely produce soybeans, and that has been exploited in the Amazon, which is leading to rapid depletion. Sure. I didn't disagree. I was just asking if all the 23% of forest losses specifically for soybeans. You can have a question. Thanks. On Back on loans if loans don't come with conditionalities which you say who's to say that the money is being invested into the economy and not just being used by government leaders to like fuel corruption we'd say that the imf still screens for corruption just like they always do just because if it doesn't come with conditionalities how do we know that the money is being is okay. going towards what you're saying that the impact is yeah. going to be falling so two things first of all conditionality and austerity are slightly different. The IMF got rid of austerity measures, which means we're not no longer forcing cutting of social spending and welfare programs. Second of all, we'd say conditionality is not the same thing as screening, which means the IMF can still screen these countries to say, hey, this money is getting dis this money is disappearing. It probably means your corrupt officials are stealing it. You need to watch yourself. That's not the okay, same thing as saying hard. you can't have food stamps for your people. We're going to run some prep. Yeah, give me a little bit. I'll like let y'all know when I'm back. Um, my That was 1.30. Oh, the judge had made to be cut. Oh, right. OK, we'll just chill. Is everyone back and ready to start? Are all the judges here? Y'all have to keep your cameras on. I just want to make sure you're really there and ready. Okay. I never keep my camera on when judging debate, but Tab said to 
think so for this round. I don't know if it's just because it's like technically an out round if it's different and it's a panel, but I don't know. I usually don't keep it on because I know y'all don't care about like eye contact and stuff the same way speech kids do. Like we're all flowing, but. No, y'all do you. I don't care. It's fine. Um, It's going to start with an overview. It's basically just like weighing stuff and it's just going to go down our case. Is anybody not ready? Start an overview on the economy. We prereq, we, we prereq because interstate conflicts prereq any sort of economic benefits that they say that it causes because it destroys infrastructure, stops investment, hearts economic growth. It also means that governments don't have enough money to actually help both refugees and their citizens, which means both die at increased rates. These effects also spill over to the rest of the region because of refugees and other destabilizing effects of conflict. Also, by extinction not waste because another impacts matter if literally everyone is dead. Any risk of this means you vote negative. There are two different really big paths to the ballot. We're always going to prereq there. Let's go on the connection one about Jordan. A couple of issues. First, Jordan's stability is really not low now, and they, and they are by de- definition debt dependent. You, um, they this uh, Yom writes this, this, this week that political earthquake anger by economic hardship in rampant countries. Many of these communities began to seem as a better choice for the king than Abdu, uh, uh, Abdullah. Jordan in, is in tatters and survives only through massive infusions of aid. And Jordan's loads are filled with austerity measures, meaning that austerity is not only a turn to this contention, but also specifically these loans have wrecked worker rights in Jordan as uh, BWP writes the, the review further that labor. Um, Labor flexibilization policy is widely considered to be undermined labor rights, which endorse and decreased minimum wage, zero hour contracts, and almost ignored fundamental workers' rights that collective bargaining have not managed to bring Jordani- Jordanian debt down. However, they did lock the country's citizenship into a perpetual cycle of austerity with even more drastic measures and major implications for political stability, which means, first of all, this also re- answers the thing where they say that like unconditional loans aren't happening. It's literally happening in Jordan right now. We're the only team that's reading empirical evidence on our country who's done it. You prefer us there. But then the impact of that is increasing poverty. Is Kaylee right that removing wage protections will make the situation worse, especially because some employers who have not suffered adverse effect from the pandemic may abuse the law to lower wages arbitrarily and um, on on and also, FDI decreased empirically in Jordan because of conflict. They don't have an investment link. Elliot writes that political, civil, and economic turmoil in, in Jordan's neighboring country, Syria, and Iraq, has been really tough on the domestic economy and has dropped by 11.5% in the region. Also, every impact from this contention is limited and probably because external military aid from Jordan is in, inevitable from the United States. Jordan survives only through massive infusions of aid and arms from Washington, giving the U.S. military untriple operations, operational rights. The entire kingdom is now cleared to become a giant U.S. base. But then that's further by the fact that on Iran aggression, the United States and Iran both agreed to get back into compliance with the nuclear deal. Um, Iran, Iran's breakup time is a few months. They can return to compliance fairly quickly. They want the United States to lift sanctions. Sanctions is literally the only thing keeping Iran from doing it to the point where they don't read any kind of sanctions like going away uh, evidence. That means that not only will they the, be scared of like United States pre, uh, United States retaliation, but also the uh, like Iran's like being kept by, uh, back by sanctions. Let's go on to see two about bailouts or sorry on bailouts. Couple of issues. The IMF creates debt crisis in two ways. The first is debt dependency. Mutsi explains that instead of bailing out countries, it's created a list of countries suffering from debt dependency. All the countries across the world have been bailed by the IMF. 41 countries have been using IMF credit for between, between 10 to 19 years. It's nearly impossible to weed an economy from the IMF debt programs, like we saw in Jordan, which is again the only empirical evidence from this. But then, second is a moral hazard. As LE19 explains that with the IMF encouraging reckless lending in 17 other countries, this creates a moral hazard by constantly bailing out countries in a debt crisis without requiring debt restructuring. The IMF has placed burdens of a crisis on the shoulders of citizens. And for these two reasons, George 12 qualifies the probability of sovereign debt default increases by two percentage points in the aftermath the IMF program. So even if you buy that for some reason in the short term, they prepare one debt default, they're actually creating 12 more and keeping a country in, in the constant cycle. But then let's go to credibility. Oh, also on bailouts, they say that the loans are unconditional. A couple of issues that this. If, there's, if they're un- un- unconditional, then there's no credibility to them, and you can like cross by everything about to say to SDRs onto them. But also, Ambrose 20 tells you that eight, eight, or Ambrose 21 tells you that 80% of loans right now have conditions. Also, we see that empirically with Jordan. But then on credibility, first turn it. The I, 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 IMF decreases FDI, an empirical study of 68 countries over three decades. Everything found is that countries signing IMF agreements attract about 25% less foreign direct investment than the countries signing the IMF agreements. This is the most holistic study done in the round. But then there's also remember the fact that it creates a moral hazard. That logic makes a lot of sense because it means that countries become more risky investments as they begin to take more risk. That's why Hepler Brookings quantifies the global moral hazard created by the IMF rescues has played a major role in nearly 100 banking crises. It's doing way more harms than good. But then go to SCR. Start with an overview. SCRs need reforms in order to be successful, but those will not come anytime soon. There's literally no way that SCRs will be capable of bringing about the AFs, um, impacts of the AF claims. But that's why um, also, oh, yeah, so first of all, we don't know where the SRs goes. The fact that they're in a blank check means that we have no idea where the countries go. So even if they say the SRs are really good, this could literally just be funneled back into corruption, but also uh, it's limited transaction uses. Mandang 20 explains that the fact that SRs cannot be used outside the IMF and some designated agencies has greatly reduced its practical relevance to serve in international transactions. Considerable changes will be required first to make the SR useful. They're so unlikely to materialize anytime soon and also poor allocation. Okay. Y'all don't have yeah. to flow poor allocation. That was just me being desperate. Thanks. Uh, can I get a doc with everything you read? Thanks. Let me just edit it really quick because there's some stuff that I didn't put in. Yeah, you're all good. If you could just drop all the cards at the bottom or if you read the cards, it's cool too. I read all the cards. Cool. Yeah, everything else is good. I just didn't get to the end. It's fine.
Oh, I need to put the Ambrose evidence in there. Sydney, can you send it? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I just sent my rebuttal and then Sydney's about to send the Ambrose evidence, which is like conditions are happening now, like during COVID. Sorry, Cindy's about to send it. It's been sent. Did y'all get it? Wait, no, tell us if you're on car and hold up. It's Daryl. Just it's kidding. Tagged the wrong way, though. Uh, oh, Cindy sending the other card. Yeah, I think yeah, that's sorry, my bad. It's the roll, not Ambrose. That's on me. Um, for SDRs, it says there's two reasons for their failure. You only read the first one, right? Let me check. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, and then the we don't know where it goes. So like corruption, but that wasn't carded. Okay. Are y'all writing prep or no? Uh, no, I'm waiting on the other piece of evidence. Okay. That you're sending. Okay, I got it. Uh, I'll call so he'll give a thumbs up when I start prep. Hold on. Is the evidence on your response to SDRs the same, the Medang evidence twice? Um, yeah, it's a different, I think it's two different parts of the, yeah, it's two different parts of the Medang article. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm good then. Uh, that was 51 used. It's just going to be their, or our case, their case. Yeah. Everyone good? Awesome.
On the overview, they say that interstate conflict is a prerequisite to the economy, but no, it's probably reverse causal. If the economy is going down and they've read evidence that says the interstate conflict is already brewing, if the economy goes down, that means there's probably A, no restrictions against interstate conflict, i.e. other organizations or actors or economic like downfalls and grievances are probably leading to more and more interstate conflict or more grievances which probably trigger their interstate conflict argument more proven empirically. Whatever countries go to economic collapse, there's like more and more terrorism, which means that if we win our econ arguments, it's probably better prerequisite to their argument. On Jordan, we're not going to go for this argument. Uh, they read a couple of turns on austerity, but the Reuters evidence postdates all of their evidence and indicates that spending is increasing now, which means history is not on their side and we'll concede the impact defense that the u.s and iran are both getting back on the nuclear deal and sanctions always stop it which means there's no impact anyway on the c2 on COVID, first on our first thing on bailouts they say that dependency happens this is fine they don't read an actual like impact to dependency we just say it takes time even if they're dependent on 10 to 19 years on the imf they still like take loans more and more in order to actually grow their economies that's still better second they say that moral hazard happens no what raga fo2 finds and posts their evidence that there's never a more uh, evidence of a moral hazard for two reasons first because countries and uh, banks always pay back their loans in full and second the imf gives uh, like fiscal advice to these countries which is why there's never been a single like piece of evidence that indicates that there was moral hazard on their default argument our bulimia evidence is far better because not only does it post date there but it looks at 100 different countries over 35 years and finds that there's two percent less chance of a default and the chance of two uh, percent less of a chance of a default with the imf they don't actually do the methodolo methodological comparison on fdi they say that loans are unconditional so there's no credibility no we say they loans don't have austerity but they still have conditions i.e you have to increase spending in these sectors which is why because of the imf's reputation and the current conditions which aren't austerity but actually um pro spending we say that there's still like pl pl plenty of reputation they say that 84 loans have conditions a their evidence literally says it's optional and recommended these countries don't have to adopt them but being more importantly if they do adopt them it's probably only helping their economy they say that there's 25 percent less fdi attracted no our chi evidence is far better because it evaluates all of the rating agencies which actually dictate where the investment goes and how investors make their decision it says that the imf is a uh, high the highest rating by all these agencies in 116 out of 117 of them then on our sdr segment first they just say analytically that they don't know where to go no our shalal evidence indicates that a sdrs are going to vaccinate the population 70 percent of the population in the developing world can be uh, vaccinated and being more importantly doesn't matter these countries can use uh, their money to uh, like do their needs for example they can spend however they need to in order to grow their economy. It's probably way better than loans because SDRs are things like grants. They don't have to be paid back. Then they say the SDRs come too late. No, our evidence indicates that right now SDRs are going and they're going to help save half a billion people from going into poverty that's conceded. And the third argument they make is that there's limited transaction news. I don't even know what this means. It's so under contextualized. Our argument is still that right now with the current SDRs that were already dispersed in July, they like, can vaccinate 70% of the population. That argument's conceded. Go to their case. On their case at the top on currency devaluation, three responses. First, their Beckins and Lincoln evidence doesn't even mention the IMF says that countries see currency devaluation as an easy way to make money and gain advantages in global trade, proving an incentive for countries to do this no matter what. Second, you turn the argument because if they're going to do it no matter what, absent the IMF, developing countries would continue to engage in this because when you have massive amounts of debt and you need the money to go and finance your debt or pay off your creditors, you're going to go and look to resource extraction or uh, like deforestation, which is what these countries have always been doing even before the IMF when they were in massive debt. But what goes 20 finds is that with the IMF and uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal advice, at least to things like reg regulation of natural resources, meaning that that we have a better link into protect, protecting countries because it's a try or die for the act. The only risk that they actually decrease currency devaluation or decrease like deforestation or resource extraction is in the app world. Then with, on their like impact level, they say that the Amazon is being killed solely because of soybeans. No, what Sandy 20 finds is that there's cattle demand for beef as well as a necessity for agricultural land because of climate change destroying arable land, which means deforestation is inevitable. inevitable. The Amazon is always going to be just, uh, de destroyed and there's absolutely no brink for how much they have to destroy in order to trigger their impact. On Sudan, at the top of general's term, so 15 finds that the IMF programs reduce ethnic groups fears that economic crisis would be unfairly born on them, reducing overall ethnic tensions by half. Handelman 05 finds that ethnic conflicts have killed 20 million people, which outweighs their argument in two ways. First is the best link, best link in the conflict alleviation is the driving factor behind most conflicts are ethnic tensions. And second, it's a better link to development because when Nuri 11 finds that ethnic conflict has been the greatest barrier to African and global development. Then on their like link level, first their Kurtz evidence says that the US and World Bank policies contributed significantly to terrible economic reforms, which means absent the IMF because it was a lender of last resort, they probably would have gone into mass amounts of debt or defaults or had economic crises, which probably triggers the prerequisite weighing I did on their case. Second, their MCOS evidence doesn't even say the word democracy. It's just to avoid war. They need U.S. intervention. Third, on refugees, there's so many alt sovereignties. For example, the EU or countries like Ethiopia and Uganda can always take refugees. And on the civil war, and they don't even extrapolate the way civil war occurs. They just say there's minor instability. And then the next card they read just says civil war is bad. You shouldn't read, let them read new internal links in first summary. Um, can you send a speech doc? A lot of it is just analytics. Um, okay, can you send cards? Uh, can, sure. Can you send that. specifically? Uh, can you go mute? Oh, yeah. The turn, the first turn on Sudan, that IMF decreases ethnic fears. Mm -hmm. Um, the impact defense to C one. Uh, sure. And um, IMF regulation of natural resources on C one as well. Okay. Thanks. Wait, what was the last one? Uh, the second response on C one that the IMF, oh. yeah, regulation or whatever. I got you, I got you.
Okay, I think all of them should be sent. Let me know when you get them. Okay. We aren't taking prep or anything right now. Yeah, you're good. Okay, we've gotten it. Are you good for cross? Yeah, you can have the first question. Okay. What piece of evidence says that the World Bank in the United States caused the problems in Sudan? The Kurds? I think it's whatever first piece of evidence. Okay, is. yeah. So Kurt says that Sudan achieved important preliminary success, cites the United States removing Sudan from its list of states sponsoring terrorism and the World Bank organizing a trust. Mm -hmm. Then it says, however, um, yeah. That then it goes into, however, in the no, short no, no. term, you're, economic you're the reforms yeah. Yeah, hit it, to people Sudan hard. Line, I say. Yeah. Where yeah. where does it say the United States, where does it say World Bank after the however? Like World Bank. All of these were steps to reduce Sudan's extremely high debt. Sudan was required to reduce debt with international No, the World Bank, the United States just removed them from a list and the World Bank organized a trust fund. The International Monetary Fund was the I mean, one who in who actually employed okay, tertiary okay, you're, advisory you're, you're programs. If I could just them, if I could so. just finish really quick. Okay. The, the IMF was the only one who actually in order to like enacted conditions, which is what said the economic reforms hit the people of Sudan hard, cutting subsidies, devaluing the pound. All of that happened okay. because of the IMF. That's, you can give a speech that's great, but what the evidence says is that all of these were steps to reduce the debt. And the evidence goes on to conclude that the economic reforms from all of these have hit the people of Sudan hard. So the, the implication I made is it, very simple. Yeah, and then it so, clarifies so afterwards. Quick, your speech, just let me explain it real quick. Okay, sure. could, could I just quickly explain? Yeah, go for I'm it. not saying that the World Bank in the US call or like is stopping democratization or like not encouraging democratization or whatnot. I'm saying that absent the IMF, the US and World Bank were still doing policies or economic reforms that were causing harms. So this right. conflict- I understand that. The problem is that Kurtz isolates harms, that the harms, was, right. I understand that. But the problem is that Kurtz isolates that what actually caused the Sudanese crisis were actions enacted by the IMF, but you can have so a question. Kurt says that the World Bank and the U.S. were also critical. No, the United States took him reports. off a list. It's not the same thing as enacting austerity, which I all the rest of our evidence isolates. I love yes. direct quotes from your evidence. They that's took them off right. a list of terrorism. You can have a question. Again, it's from your evidence, but that's all right. So on your argument on agriculture or resource extraction, um, what is the counterfactual? What are these countries doing um, when the IMF is not there? What do you mean? They don't um, make a massive the shift to one specific the four countries go to the IMF and yeah, we say, they don't make a currency. they don't make a massive shift to like devaluation or shifting like so what for are they example. Doing? Just sitting in on, debt? Honestly, we don't even have to prove countries. We just have to prove Brazil. And Brazil specifically shifted its section to soybeans specifically because of Wait, the IMF. And like, that's why none of your responses are Brazil specific. Our link is solely dependent on the fact that Brazil did it. So, Except so, for like the cattle demand, which Sydney's going to talk about. Can I have a question, question before cross? Is, Wait, really quick. Can I have a question before cross is over? I guess. Okay. You tell me that SDRs are going to vaccinate people. How do we know that? Because our evidence says so. Can I, can you send that? Yep. Thanks. Oh, you didn't send impact defense on C1 about cattle demand? Oh, my bad. I didn't hear that. I'll send that over as well. Thanks. Uh, Sihil, can you send the Shalal evidence to them? It's from the- Yeah. Yeah, I got that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Send. 
Yeah, I also send mine. I'll let you know when we get both. Cool. Okay, I got the vaccine card, but I'm still waiting on impact defense, the cattle stuff. All right, got it. Uh, we're gonna start prep. Okay, yeah. The order is going to be starting off on my case and then going on to their case. How much prep do you have left? Huh? That's no, all. we don't have prep left. Yeah, that's all of our prep. Okay, is everyone ready? Perfect. All right. It's starting on this overview, so it basically it's, it's still going to be overview, our case, their case. Start off on the overview. They lose a round at the point where they drop the extinction framing. If we win any link into extinction happening due to the IMS specifically, you're going to be voting for us at the end of the day because it literally doesn't matter if SDRs lift people out of poverty. It doesn't matter any of their impacts because nothing matters when everybody is dead. On our case, devaluation is the easiest place to vote. We tell you that Jiren Walter indicates specifically that IMF policies regularly include currency devaluations, which increase the likelihood that authorities will devalue their exchange rates by 31%. Unfortunately, devaluation does not work. That empiric is resistant. Still, which is why Waz Raza explains that the IMF caused them to devalue their currencies as a result of that currency devaluation. It shifted Brazil's agriculture to soybean production, which is why cultivation of soybeans in the Amazon increased 60% because of Brazil. That is the bright line that they say we don't provide. That has been in case in every speech from the jump. The impact of that is distinction, which is why Tulis finds that a 20% of the Amazon has already been lost to deforestation and that rapid depletion because of soybean per, per, uh, production is what eliminates the rest. Insofar as 20% of the world's water supply comes here, changing the Amazon could de destroy it could transform it from a sink to a carbon source and the world's global medicinal purposes come from here we're clearly winning the extinction link now let's go into the line by line they tell you at the top that our link doesn't say that the i am or doesn't our link does not say that the that diva the imf is like the reason why that happened jiren walter are very specific in saying
saying that, but literally look to the empiric that Raza give you. Then they tell you that the that in countries that devaluation would happen regardless. But devaluation happening regardless makes no sense because no country is going to devalue their currency and boost exports. Even if boosting exports were to happen regardless, our empiric specifically states that the IMF loan is what led to agricultural liberalization. That is what they do not respond to. That is the link. But then they tell you that the IMF has like some sort of regulations over like extracting natural natural resources. The problem is that that, that their card says that the, that the IMF provides technical assistance to resource rich countries. This doesn't matter insofar as Brazil literally is not doing anything and is only exacerbating the, their soybean production. But then on their impact, they tell you that cattle demand is in for, increasing deforestation. Deforestation is inevitable. It doesn't matter because the impact is scalar. The more you exacerbate, the faster it happens, which leads to extinction faster. So all in all, they're still continuing to link that deforestation leads to extinction. But also their card about cattle bee production literally concedes that soybean soy farms are the root cause of, of, of con con climate change increasing. On to Dan, the only response is that they extend this turn about ethical fears. One, it's not all specific to Dan, so they don't solve. Two, they never give a specific warrant about how the IMF specifically decreased ethical tensions, but we give you specific warrants which shade drop. Let's go into their case where it's gonna be winded around. On their on their second contention about COVID, the problem for them is that their the, the empirics is just not on their side. Specifically on SCRs, they cold drop that we have no idea where these SCRs are going to go because both teams concede that SCRs are a free check, so they have to win the incentive that country have to not just put it back in their pockets of government officials, but actually give it towards the people. But where they're losing is that it's on this turn that empirically the IMF reduces FDI and countries get 25% left. The only less the only response that they give is that moral hazard hazard doesn't exist. Look to the empiric that more hazard literally created 100 different banking crises. Okay, cool. That was one second over, by the way. Yeah, yeah you're good. Counts. You're good. Uh, I have 251 left. I'm going to call so he'll give a thumbs up when we start, Pred.
I have that as three minutes of prep from y'all. Like three minutes just now. But um Yeah, that's all our prep. Um let's see, I get my timer out. It's gonna be the app case than the neg case, but I'm gonna start on a couple of way mechanisms. If anybody is not ready, speak now or forever hold your peace. Should we really mute? Okay, cool. If anybody is not ready, speak now or forever hold your peace. The only way they extend in the round is this extinction first way, but the problem is they miss the embedded way in Shabir's non-unique. Remember when Shabir tells you that even if the IMF doesn't exist, these countries are going to do resource extraction. That means that the reason they're going to do resource extraction is because of an economic crisis. That means that if we solve back for economic crises, we solve back best for resource extraction, which is the internal link into deforestation because deforestation is a form of resource extraction, which means we link into climate change just as much as they do if we solve for economic impacts. Let's go on to our case. Start on the FDI argument. They just say that, they just keep extending this argument that it has reduced FDI empirically, but they completely drop Shabir's frontline and indict. He extends the Kai evidence and tells you that there is an evaluation of 117 rating agencies, and of those 117, 116 were found to prefer the IMF over all other forms of investment. And you prefer this evidence because it accounts for all forms of investment as opposed to just FDI. We're saying all forms of investment go up when the IMF goes into place. That means that we do get access to our entire second link because the only other argument they extend is this moral hazard argument saying that 100 crises have happened. But again, they can see the indict that says that th they, their own evidence talks about all causes. And second, they can see the frontline with the rock of evidence that says that. The IMF has always had every loan paid back in full. When they concede front lines, they can't win any defense. At that point, the entire second link is clean. Let's extend it. We say that right now tax revenue is collapsed, which means a lot of countries are in debt crises and are at risk of defaulting. The important thing is that the IMF can boost their credibility and signal to other actors that they are in they're a safe investment, which is why the Cooper evidence finds that it reduces inflation and it gives them better sovereign ratings. That's why the Mark evidence finds that that is key to providing future, preventing future economic distress and the impact of that. And the impact of that is the oxygen evidence that finds that a second wave of economic distress pushes half a billion people into poverty. That's critical because when these people go into poverty and economic distress happens, that means that anything that happens in Brazil is going to cause deforestation. That means that that economic collapse in Brazil is going to cause deforestation. When Brazil is an economic collapse, they need to have this resource extraction in order to have an export industry that is completely dropped. Then the uh, let's go. Uh, we'll concede the argument on SDRs that SDRs don't happen. But at the point where the only team that is solving for an economic crisis is the affirmative, the internal link into deforestation uh, into devaluation is resource extraction and that means we solve best for resource extraction let's go into their case on the turn and the non-unique they say that the rodney empiric shows that the imf is key but look again their evidence that talks about devaluation and talks about resource extraction does the evidence that talks about resource extraction does not mention the imf once and then second we would say that devaluation they said that devaluation would happen regardless or devaluation would not happen regardless but our argument is that devaluation happens regardless it's that resource extraction happens regardless because these countries need to boost their economies back up when they're in economic crisis but if they're not in economic crisis they can actually solve back then they don't respond whatsoever to the turn that says that the imf can actually solve back by giving them fiscal policy advice. Their only response is that the IMF gives technical assistance to countries that have high resources. That's exactly our argument. Brazil has high resources. It's completely dropped. Brazil has a strong Amazon forest, and that means the IMF is giving them technical assistance and teaching them how not to exploit their forest, which literally solves back for their entire case. The only risk of offense is on this economic crisis linking into climate change. We're not even have to go for the defense, but even if going on the defense, they say that the impact is scalar, but they don't give any time frame analysis to how much faster climate change happens. I would argue that means at best you give them marginal, marginal access into extinction, but I would say you really don't weigh this anywhere in the rad. Vote really easily off of the half a billion people that are going into poverty from the COVID-19 impact, you know for a fact that that is going to happen on the extinction level analysis. They don't give you any time frame way as to how much faster this happens because of soybeans. They concede the cattle farms argument. All right. Okay. Ready for grand? Yeah. Y'all can have the first question. Okay. Let's talk about resource extraction, because y'all say that our response is not responsive, but insofar as the only reason why Brazil increased its resource extraction because its currency was devalued due to the IMF, how is that not responsive if the IMF is the root cause of it? Because our argument was that regardless, because they were in massive amounts of debt, they would have always looked to resource extraction had it been a month, a year, two years later, because it's a profitable way to pay back their creditors, the it's a profitable way to make is money. That, and that, is not, that is not the case for Brazil. I, that right? is because the case for Brazil. They, no, it's not. Because our card is very specific in saying that the only reason they turned to shifting their entire agriculture sector to just the okay. production of soybeans was because their currency was devalued. Okay, okay. okay. let me quickly yeah. clarify a couple of things. We agree. The reason Brazil shifted their economy to soybeans was because of the IMF and because of currency devaluation. Our argument is, 
has nothing to do with no, agriculture. I understand what your argument is. Please don't mansplain it. Your argument to me is that Brazil would have done it regardless, but we're saying What's that it? Brazil would What's not it? have done it with regardless because the only what reason why they did it was because the IMF. Yeah, no, can you explain what it is? Because we have a different, I think we're talking about different it's. You're saying the it is re, you're saying the it is soybean farming and deforestation as a result of that. Our it is we're it's saying resource. Brazil would have done resource extraction, which is different from soybean farming, and that still causes deforestation. We're so both of us link in. into deforestation. That's all. That's it. Okay. The problem is that on resource extraction, though, your card does not say that the IMF does any sort of regulation for it. It what? does. No, it doesn't. Our it argument, says that the IMF okay. provides technical assistance to like rich resource economies, but they're obviously not doing that in Brazil insofar as they're exploiting their soybean production. So no, like, how does, how, is, okay, wait, wait, really quick. How do your responses interact with Brazil when none of your arguments are specific to them? Because yeah, so what two, your response, oh, can I let, me, let me explain. Okay, go ahead. Two ways, right? A, our arguments are not Brazil specific. You're right. It's because our arguments apply to every single resource rich country, which probably means it's global deforestation outweighing your argument on scope in so many other aspects. It, but yeah, if you talk about unique, Brazil unique. specifically, the warrants still apply. Brazil had resources. The resources are profitable. They would have inevitably looked to those. But at least with the IMF, there's a risk or it's a try or die that they're able to in the future shift away from it, even if they're doing some soybean farming now. The problem is that there is one team that is just giving analytics, like it's analytics, analytics, and there's an, another team who's literally giving carded response about the empirics yeah. of why the IMF pushed Brazil to do what we're seeing in the status quo. So it's, in the end, you're always going to prefer the team that is has specific evidence. Okay. And even, yeah. like, evidence. even no, even more onto that, y'all can see that even if like we like win in. Can I have a that, question? Like, we just don't uh, it's have a fine. Y'all can give this in, in final focus. Like that's fine. That's cross. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's cross. Okay. okay, it's going to start a devaluation and then go to COVID. Starting on Wang. Is anybody not ready? They can win their case, but they're not going to win the round because they dropped the fact that any risk of extinction means that we win. That warranty has only gone responded to in one round, and they, and they literally concede in their speech that we get a, a minor impact into extinction to the point where we tell you literally starting in rebuttal that any risk of extinction means that we outweigh because it doesn't matter if any of their impacts happen, if we're all dead, that's where we're going to be winning the round. All, but but first, let's go to this resource extraction turn. A big issue. First of all, they extend the term, but they don't like respond to Sydney's warranty, which is that no country wants to de devalue the currency because it's really unprofitable. But second of all, Brazil specifically now didn't want to devalue their currency that's really important because in order to win our case all we have to do is win that the imf specifically caused brazil to devalue their currency and, and shift to resource extraction that's really important because none of their evidence is specific to brazil they also don't read a card on resource extraction they don't even give a warrant we tell you that brazil de devaluation caused a massive shift to soybeans which is specifically what's destroying the amazon at the massive rate it's the biggest and most probable link into resource extraction rather than just a vague resource extraction turn with literally no warranty they also don't give a quantification of how much resource extraction increases in a world without the imf whereas we tell you specifically the likelihood increased by 31%, and empirically, Brazil caused a 60% increase. That is massive, and that's where we get our link into extinction. Any risk of this means that we win the round. Let's go on a technical assistance. They just say that they're going to they, they technically assist like high resource countries, and then they cross by that to Brazil. Another evidence is Brazil specific. We tell you that the regulation isn't happening clearly because they've been massively deforcing the um, the Amazon. But then we went on probability because they literally concede our link. That devaluation happens, and devaluation caused Brazil to shift. That means that you now have 100% probability the IMF is causing Brazil to um to harm the Amazon which leads to extinction. Any risk of this means that we win. We have no clue about their solvency. On to that, let's go on to why they're not going to win their case. First of all, they don't really give you any way to weigh it. They just like try to do this like prereq with, eco with the economy, but that's simply not true because we tell you that the only reason Brazil did it was for IMF. But the, the biggest issue is the fact that they dropped the moral hazard warranting. We tell you the IMF creates a moral hazard because countries now feel like they have a safety net to continue to go back. Just because countries pay back their loans doesn't mean that they won't continue to go back to the IMF. That's what makes them a risky investment and also has empirically caused 100 bank crises. Another amount of uh, warranting matters to the point where empirically this has caused a banking crisis to that point it doesn't matter if they win their entire case they don't win extinction that's where we're going to win the round cool it's going to be our argument on the economy the weighing and then their argument on currency devaluation everyone ready cool
extend our argument that Phillips evidence indicates that governments own billions of interest in repayments and interest injury rates fault or they're giving loan extensions both require good credit dozens of countries will default the only way to get credit is by the IMF the broom evidence indicates that because the IMF has a credible reputation for demanding macro macroeconomic restraint and saving countries it is the reason why investors actually come which is why the Kai evidence indicates that 117 agencies statements about the IMF only one negative one mentions negative influence the other 116 recommend that investors go which is why investment always increases in these countries that's critical because during the COVID recession they need investment and that investment is critical to lifting half a billion people out of poverty then Let's go to like this only response they send. They once again extend it through the Rogoff evidence response to moral hazard and indicates that because countries always pay back their loans in full, you can't make things like risky investment, which is why it is an indict to their evidence because the evidence literally says that there's not a single piece of solid evidence that indicates that there was ever a moral hazard. You probably prefer it over theirs and they don't really warrant out the turn too well. Go to their case. On their case, this is super misunderstood. There are two essential links into deforestation. One is currency devaluation. One is resource extraction. They read a link into currency devaluation. Great. Our argument on resource extraction is fundamentally different. The evidence that we read indicates that because resource extraction is a profitable industry, which is also happening in Brazil, it it like whenever countries are in economic downturn, i.e. whenever they don't have the IMF and they're in economic downturn, they're always going to look to resource extraction in order to get resources and pay off their debtors or just have a, like, a profitable industry. The reason this is so bad is because it links into their argument. For example, when you do massive resource extraction, it causes deforestation just like them, which is two implications for their argument. A, it means that resource extraction or currency devaluation, because then you have to sell the resources by exporting to other countries, would have all been inevitable because it's all a process together, which means that if countries are in economic crises, and if we win that the IMF solves these economic crises, we are pre-wrecking the links into extinction, which is probably a reason you should prefer the AF. Second and more importantly, they've also conceded the other reason as to why we solve resource extraction and currency devaluation. The GOES evidence indicates that the IMF is the only actor that actually regulates natural resources and gives some fiscal advice, even if Brazil increased soybean production by 60%, at least they didn't know about by 80 or 90 percent, which is probably what would have happened had there been no IMF. At the end of the day, because they've conceded that extinction is scalar, then they don't actually win an impact because extinction is inevitable. You should either A, vote on half a billion people going into poverty, or B, a risk of economic downturn pre-wrecking like any deforestation impact they read. Good round, y'all. Good round. Good round. Thank you for judging. Good round. Meg, I need to see. I realize this is uh, like y'all's impact, but could you just send me everything about Brazil and soybeans and the leading to extinction? So is all the ev in the chain or are y'all going to have to hunt for like, if I say a random card name? Um, it depends on, I guess, if the evidence has been called for so far. Okay. Um, so the, the rag of evidence, I think that's the pro stuff you can send that to me yeah. um as well as the phillips evidence um i'm like con just like send me the things you'll be re you think will be relevant for my decision like the ev that was extended in the final fuzzy okay that's what i want i want to see all the brazil stuff for con please Yeah, just to clarify, like both sides should, should send me every card that made it into the final focus, like compile a card document and send it to me. Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll send, I'll send the case cards that made it into final focus. Will you I'll send them? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I'll send all the other rebuttal stuff. Okay, so that's Rogov and then anything on their case. Yeah, yeah. Could y'all just keep these in the chain so we can all see? Yeah. Yeah, Thank I'll you. send them in the chain. Thanks.
I need a few minutes to read my flow and read some of this evidence. I don't want to speak for the other judges, but... I'm sending the moral hazard stuff, and I'm also going to copy in the devaluation stuff along with it, so it's all just in one email, uh, if that makes things easier. Um, but, yeah, so all the Brazil stuff will be in there with what she extended in Carlos. All right, it's been sent, so, like, every card that you should need should be in that email. Um, if it isn't, just let me know. Thank you. All right, all of the evidence that is in case, except for on our side of the flow, except for the rock of evidence should be sent. Shreer's getting the rest of the stuff. Yeah, and I'm sending all the deval slash moral hazard stuff.
All right, I just submitted my ballot. It looks like I was the last judge to do so. So thank you guys. Do you want to go ahead and read the decision? Um, I can't see it anymore. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so congratulations everyone on uh, being here and making it to the TOC. Great job, great debate. We have a 3-0 decision for the negative. Congratulations um, and good luck. Uh, but great, great debate guys. I had to spend a while reading evidence and looking at my flow. Really good job. Let us know if you have any questions for us. I mean, I can give my RFD. Um, so ended up voting con for Marist. Um, not particularly happy with this decision, but also not particularly happy if I had voted pro um, either. I think there's an extremely low risk of virtually every argument that's read in this debate. I don't think anyone's evidence is particularly good at all. Um, the pros cards like really don't answer moral hazard. They're broadly about allocation and resource distribution just certainly not what moral hazard is and doesn't speak to its subliminal psychological process. The con, uh, your devaluation link card is like, the IMF started getting involved before the 2002 presidential elections in Brazil and you're like currency dev devaluation started in 1999. That like non-uniques your internal link. So, so random stuff like that was happening all over the place. Um, and you all are reading like lines out of, you know, several page cards. So didn't think the evidence was particularly good, but ultimately I think um, the con is, it, the, the pro has conceded the devaluation argument. So I think there's, there's kind of a, a credible rationale to be made that you have connected the IMF's policies to devaluation. That affects the soybean industry because there's more of an incentive for them to like do exports or whatever, because they're cheaper. Um, I, I think that the pro is like winning decent defense, that it, uh, this doesn't mean it causes extinction or at least um, puts the internal link, uh, like, like is definitely defense to the internal link that, that lowers its risk marginally. So then there's this extinction stuff, you know, risk is magnitude times probability. So there's a super high magnitude of positive utility loss and I can manage a, a, a low probability of some stuff. Overall though, like I don't, think it gets to extinction. I think there's marginal deforestation. You maybe stop that process a little bit. So then we look at the pros stuff. Um, they're making arguments about kind of like uh, SDRs. So on the, on the COVID front, um, I think this moral hazard argument is kind of damning. The cards you read don't say stuff about risky investments. They're just kind of postulations. Why would X country ever want to put money in a, like allocate money in a particular way? don't really think that's the argument. I think it's just a lot of liquidity, a lot of reserve assets and more money and resources than you know what to do with means that you allocate money in a way that is not necessarily like the most efficient or the one that boosts aggregate demand or GDP the most. So that's some of this stuff. I think the pro is ahead on something like, you know, bank crises, countries defaulting. I think the environmental stuff outweighs that. And I think the moral hazard um, args are like pretty good defense. And then there's this like thing that, that y'all are calling an internal link, but it's really a turns case arg to their impact, which is like the resource extraction stuff. They've said devaluation gets there faster. You've said resource extraction gets there faster. No one is comparing these two internal links at all. Like I literally do not know what to do with either of them, but they've like dropped evaluation and the cons like, pretty good about the reason why devaluation causes um, Brazil's uh, soybean stuff to uh, take off and, and increase deforestation. I think the, the reason why you don't access resource extraction is one, like I don't think there's a super great um, internal link one to uh, economic crises. Um, and second is like, I, I don't really think there's uniqueness for, for, this, for this turn either. Um, and then the final thing is like the card that you read that you think says that it solves technical assistance programs. This card is pretty much just about people, you know, or, or like the IMF and institutions like caring about uh, uh, like resources. They're going to direct public investment differently. None of that says anything about private sector crowd out, which is their argument. And just like 
the overall institutional approach Brazil has to making soybeans a more profitable industry. So ultimately, low risk of everything, higher risk of the con stuff, or higher risk of the uh, con stuff than the pro stuff. I have a question on the moral hazard stuff. Yeah, so how about um, the other two judges that. can give their RFDs and then you can ask me whatever questions you want at the end. All right, cool, I can go next. I think my decision ends up being like slightly different, but um, so I, I think like starting with this weighing, right, about like uh, extinction that gets conceded. So I'm basically looking for any link to extinction. Um, and at that point, so on the, the neg side of the flow, right, I'm getting that devaluation happens. Um, and that link gets conceded pretty much because the only response is like, it's an alt cause, right? So then the alt cause is that, um, or, or like the it happens anyways, like inevitable response is that resource extraction happens and at least the IMF is there to like regulate it. Um, and so, yeah, th these are basically competing links for extinction. I'm not really sure how to resolve them, um, but the only sort of, uh, and anything that I get really is the neg giving me in, yeah, through summary and final focus at the very least that they're giving me quantified impacts of the 60% increase in soybean extraction, which is like the only thing I can use to resolve them. Cause I was sort of like looking across my flow, like how can I resolve this debate of like two links into extinction that I know like one of them will win the round. And so for me, like the past, the path, as they say, like the path of least intervention was like trying, uh, using this like 60% evidence, which was like pretty blippy, but it's like the only thing I have on the flow to resolve it. Um, I am very much going to resonate with what both of the uh, my fellow judges just shared. This this round was pretty messy and it was difficult for me to make a decision, but it really shouldn't have been. Um, I definitely did not didn't like moral hazard ends up not even not really becoming a wash for me, but just not something I can like weigh or extend at all, except the 160 investors believe that the IMF is credible. That's like really the only solid like number in AF's final focus that I can extend. Um, and I agree with what the um, last judge said about currency devaluation. Like the only thing, really the only thing I can vote on at the end of the day is what happens in Brazil specifically. So I, I don't, I also don't love the extinction link because I think it's very outside of the time frame of this round but it's like kind of the only thing that I have to weigh like neg does a better job in summary and final focus of telling me that I can weigh what's happening in Brazil as it pertains to resource extraction with soybeans and then AF's final focus I think spent too too long talking about moral hazards and the credible reputation that the IMF has and then you kind of start talking about like well currency devaluation versus resource extraction, which is a profitable industry, but I think you should have hit harder more on the specific Brazil example. Um, I would have, when I was reading through the cards that you sent over to, I would have liked to have seen some more of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, it comes down to Brazil for me and I vote NAG just because they weigh better. It's really the most simple way I can put it, but good round, good debate, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all your hard work and your passion. Thanks for judging. Thanks so much. Great I'm round. open to, you can, y'all can ask me whatever questions. I just had actually one question. So on the moral hazard argument, you said that mm -hmm. it was damning. Um, the front line on the Rago evidence was that there was no empirical support for moral hazard causing it. Um, was that like just, I, I, I heard you talk about like the earlier parts where it gives the warranting about private capital flows. Um, but I like the empirics was also a front line to it. Was that just not flowed? Was that not extended cleanly enough? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I guess not an argument. Of, you know, you're just like, it hasn't happened before, but there's, or, or rather, there's no evidence to support that moral hazard is a thing. I mean, they're reading cards that are like, you know, the various countries have various incentives for, for financial allocations. Would have been good if there was more explanation of why that's the case and why that continues to be the case, or even like, what does no empirical evidence mean? Is it like no country has ever done, has that like ever engaged in a moral hazard? What's the standard for what a moral hazard is, et cetera. So like explaining that a little better, but I think would have, would have benefited you. I also agree with um, what the last judge said, like the internal link specificity is important and they have like this specific scenario that's not, you know, necessarily, there's not a lot of defense that's read through that. 
Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, good luck to you all in your next round. Thank you for judging.